Hey folks, Scott Kelby here from Kelby One, the most awesome place to learn Photoshop. And we're going to do a Photoshop tutorial that is based on a cool little product photography idea. Now I saw this, I was inspired by uh, B&H in my Twitter feed. So I'm looking at my Twitter feed and I see this little ad that they had run. And I saw this little layout and I'm like, oh, that's a Photoshop thing that I've been doing for years. And so I thought I would show you today uh, on a lens that I... Uh, shot I shot this in our studio for uh, I sold it on on eBay about a week and a half ago Hey, here's the behind the scenes shot just in case you care. So uh, number one here We shot it on white seamless paper just on a little table number two. I use some um, Continuous lights. These are Westcott spider lights So I have one on one side one on the other side and one up top So number two three and four are all continuous lights. So they're not a strobe. There's no strobe they're just continuously on lights. Number five is, uh, it's a little circular, uh, what do you call it? A turntable. There we go. It's a turntable. Now, uh, this is a commercial little spinner here at the bottom, but we made our own little Formica top here. You can buy these. Uh, you can buy them actually fairly inexpensively if you go to Amazon and look. And you turn the motor on and they spin. Why would you have them spin? for video. If you're doing like a video product and you want to show it in 360 or something, I don't use this spinner. I just stick the lens there. Okay. So that's how it's done. Now let's do the technique in Photoshop. All right. Step one is you're going to go over here and get the quick selection tool and we are just going to paint over the lens. Now, when you use the quick selection tool, it makes a quick selection. It's well named and let's make sure that we get all the sides and everything here. And looks like we pretty much, I missed a little spot right there. Oh, now I overdid it. Here, let's make the brush a little smaller because I just need that little spot right in there. All right. And I think we're pretty close. Okay. Now, we are going to... Oops, I missed a little bit over here, too. All right. So here's what we're going to do. And, and it went a little too far over here. If you hold the Option key on Mac or the Alt key on Windows, there we go. It'll fix that. It'll remove that area. Okay. Let's press Command-J on Mac or Control-J on Windows and you can see it made a transparent layer. I'm going to hide the background layer. You can see now I have just the lens on its own transparent layer. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to the layers panel and create a new blank layer with nothing on it. We're going to go get the elliptical marquee tool. So the one that makes circles or ovals. We're going to make a giant circle here. Let's just make this big giant circle right there. And we're going to fill it with white. So we have a big white circle behind us. That's going to give us the spotlight effect. But to make it look more like a spotlight, we're going to go filter, blur. We're going to choose a Gaussian blur. And we're going to blur the heck out of it. So here's a little bit of blur. We're going to take it up to like 70, 75, something like that. Big, massive blur. There we go. 70 in this case. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to flatten this down. We're going to flatten the layer that I'm on with the layer below it. If you press Command E on Mac or Control E on Windows, it'll flatten it down. And you can see that that big circle covered the, the old lens pretty much on the old layer, pretty much. And we're going to do this. We're going to get the rectangular marquee tool and we're going to select about the top half, say, of this background layer. So even though you can see this, we're on the background layer. Press Command J to put just that little part on its own layer like that. That's going to create our table, right? So let's go and drag it straight down and look, that creates the table that our lens sits upon. And you can see it's kind of darker, which is kind of what we want. We still we still have a ways to go here. We're not done, but we're, we're getting there. All right, so that's that kind of basic thing. You can see the circle there, and it's kind of mirrored here. Now, let's merge these two layers together. Press Command-E. Now, we, one thing we lost is the shadow that was here, the drop shadow that was under the lens in real life. So here's how we can get it back. Let's add a new layer. We are going to go to the History Brush. So the history brush is, ready, undo on a brush. Oh yeah, undo on a brush. So we're going to go and paint where the shadow used to be. And what it does, it's going to paint back in the original shadow. So we can actually go out to the sides here and paint. Now you see how it, it paints the shadow in really well. The original shadow comes right back, but also we were on a white background before and now it's kind of painting a lighter background. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do this. We're going to change the layer blend mode. We're going to change it to darken and that way the white area goes away and it pretty much just leaves the shadow. So you get a realistic shadow. Uh, you, it's the original real shadow the camera took. So that's why you know it's real. Now, 
What else can we do? Or well, we can get rid of that shadow and kind of merge it with the background if we want. Let's go ahead and do that. The last thing that I would probably do is let's make a reflection, all right, for this. For We still have a couple more steps, but let's make a reflection for the lens. Duplicate the lens by pressing uh, Command-J on Mac or Control-J on Windows. And let's try that again. There it is. There's the duplicate over here in my Layers panel. And we're going to flip it upside down. Let's go to Command-T, which is Free Transform. On Mac, Control T on Windows, and then we're going to right click and choose Flip Vertical. It is going to flip the lens upside down. We are going to drag it straight down so it kind of aligns with the other lens. And I'm going to go to Free Transform. It's a little crooked. Let's kind of straighten it out a little bit there. All right, there we go. Now, we don't want the mirror reflection to appear in front of the lens. We'll put it behind there. So I'm dragging it in the layers panel down one. Now we're going to be do three clicks and make it fade away. Click number one right here in the layers panel. We're going to click the third icon, the layer mask icon. Click number two. We're going to grab the gradient tool and click number three. Let's see which way do we drag. Do we drag up? I think we drag yeah, we'll drag up like that. Let's drag a little further. So I'm holding the shift key so it drags a straight line. And you can see it kind of fades away. And we're going to lower the opacity. So the last step really is to go to the background and give it a color. So I'm going to click on the background layer. We're going to go to the adjustments panel. We're going to click on this icon right here, which gives us the hue and saturation adjustment layer. Let's do that. And then while we're over here in the panel where the hue adjustment controls now appear, we're going to click on Colorize. That's going to let us add a color to this gray background. So we'll hit Colorize. And then we'll drag this over to a blue, I think was the color that B&H used for theirs. Alrighty, I think we're pretty much there. You can make it darker if you want to go to the saturation. Now you can really see that white spotlight in the background kind of standing out. That works pretty well. And if you want to darken the whole thing, you can just lower the lightness and... There you go. And we're always, this is all just affecting the background layer, so it doesn't affect the, the lens very much. And the last thing that they had, they had kind of a darkening, kind of an edge effect on it. So what we could do is when you're done, flatten the image. And then I would go to the Camera Raw filter. Go into the filter menu and choose Camera Raw. And we're going to go, ready? Let me make this a little larger just for fun. We're going to go to the FX panel. We're going to go to the post crop vignetting over here. We're just going to lower the amount so it kind of darkens the edges on the outside like that. And I think that's pretty much the trick. All right, there you have it. Hey guys, now that you've watched a Photoshop tutorial and now that you know and I know that you love Photoshop and you want to get really, really good at it, you want to be a total Photoshop shark, go over to kelby1.com. You can start learning tons of Photoshop stuff for as little as $9.99 a month, or you can do the Kelby One Pro plan and get all kinds of crazy stuff and up to 800 classes and online help and all kinds of other awesome stuff that's community-based. And it's all there for you at kelby1.com. So go check it out and thanks very much and we'll catch you guys next time.